technology cannot operate in isolation. Technology must always generate its own inventions. Nigeria to consolidate on indigenous technologies, innovation, and intensive research in 2020. Aftermath of Saturday's gas explosion, Kaduna government shuts refill outlets in residential areas. Continue from where uh, my cells uh, finish. Supercam concept yielding results in fight against insurgency as new commander takes over tactical air command in Makudi. Hello and a warm welcome to the network news at nine on Africa's largest television network. I am Muhammad Kudu Abu Bakar. Tonight we shall be joining Michael Olale in Lagos, Felicia Daliop Samayela in Jaws. Thank you for joining us. Nigeria's journey to development following from being an import and oil dependent to a self-reliant and more diversified economy as an industrial nation has received a boost through the intervention of the science and technology sector in the year 2019. Justin Bem, who takes a look at the outgoing year, reports that the sector intensified recorded efforts to promote indigenous technologies, promote innovations and intensive research as well as commercialization of findings from individuals and institutions. 2019 started by the annual Science and Technology Expo that exposes researchers, innovators and investors to new trends and for commercialization of their works. It is also a deliberate policy aimed at encouraging Nigerians to embrace science and technology as a profession and also showcase to the public potentials of research and development institutions. The fact that ERGP recognizes innovations and inventions as key drivers of economic progress, Nigeria in the year under review through the Presidential Standing Committee on Inventions and Innovations awarded 81.5 million Naira grant to 126 inventors and innovators to enhance productivity and enhance competitiveness. Another grant of 25 million naira was given to five academies as a token to encourage research contributions to national development. And technology cannot operate in isolation. Technology must always generate its own inventions, its own innovations, but that will be, uh, will be assisted by the wisdom that comes from the humanities. And it is when you pull all this together that you will now have uh, you know, the problems of society being solved in a manner that will help our nation to move very quickly to get to the top. In 2019, the country made a breakthrough in the sector with the discovery and development of the world's first ever plant origin anti snake venom vaccine, conducted by scientists from the University of Jaws, which will make anti snake vaccine affordable and available for Nigerians. Though under clinical trials, there is hope for more funding to conclude the process. If you see the quantum amount of money we pay, in importing vaccine into this country, but the opportunities is here for us to rob minds and see how we can now move this um, pilot project to the commercialization level. This is going to be not only beneficial to Nigeria, but to African countries in particular. I am made to understand by the researcher that 200 million naira is required for the phase one clinical trials. The first two clinical trials will also require close to 400 million naira. The first three will require even much more. Number of patenting in the country grew in 2019 as the National Office for Technology Acquisition and Promotion, NOTAP, patented 57 indigenous innovations and inventions. Despite the general elections that slowed down government activities, 2019 for players in the science and technology sector feel was a landmark and turning point in the country's quest for development. Justin Bemuni, NTA News. 
In continuation of our review of the education sector in the outgoing year, Abdullahi Musa Suleja brings us more highlights of the subsector's major events. In when the present administration came into power in 2015, it promised to take a holistic look at the education sector and enact a policy to enable smooth revamping and the development of the sector. To this, the ministry engaged relevant partners both locally and internationally. Sequel to this, a breakthrough was recorded in the field when information technology was launched alongside a national policy on ICT in education, which was developed since 2010, but was not implemented owing to lack of fund and backing. This hinged on the need for Nigeria to align with emerging trends in education and ICT, socio-economic development, and individual ability to survive in contemporary environment using ICT. You cannot function in today and tomorrow's world if you are not IT compliant. We must prepare our kids in our school today for the opportunities, the challenges, and the jobs of tomorrow. Marking the 2019 World Literacy Day, Minister of Education resolved to deploy a robust mechanism to tackle menace of low-level literacy in the country. The measures include ensuring curriculum delivery in basic and secondary schools, proper monitoring, putting in place functional and continuing education for youth and adults. Successful development of literacy is founded on the occasion of language skills. Literacy in talks enhances and extends oral language abilities in all these ramifications throughout one's lifetime. To encourage talent and get the youth to embrace teaching as a profession, the federal government is collaborating with state and local governments to ensure a enabling environment to enhance the capacity and well-being of the teachers. This picture was painted at the 2019 World Teachers' Day, where awards, cars and other gifts were presented to outstanding teachers and schools in the country. There is urgent need for policies that will provide allowances and initiate annual retention benefits for in order to attract them to rural communities. The incident of student sodomization in special school in Abuja and the rise in sex for grade by some high institutions lecturers were meted with condemnation with relevant and concerned bodies swinging into action to address the allegation and menace. 1999 was the year Tasha Education Fund, TED Fund, came into existence. Hence, the body saw the need to assess its activities so far regarding interventions in tertiary institutions. A technical advisory committee was thereby inaugurated for impact assessment, consisting of senior university lecturers, ASU, and non governmental organizations. If we are serving Nigerians, we should submit ourselves to self scrutiny for reviewing the path of a journey so as to be able to reveal strengths, weaknesses, progress, challenges and windows of opportunities to improve. These and many more policies and interventions were put together to enhance the sector with more in the pipeline to enable Nigeria's education stand its ground globally. Abdullah Musa Suleja, NTA News. What are the major challenges for women, poverty, and gender violence? It appears there are some positive results. At least most women in Nigeria can look back at the year 2019 with a smile on their faces and hope for more. Considering the achievements recorded, especially the publicly declared war against rape, violence and illiteracy. And so Damien Atti has a rundown of activities in 2019 and prospects for 2020. This cry for an innocent child who has been raped brings tears of empathy in the eyes of every parent. She's just one of the many girls and women who suffer different forms of violence. He started harassing me sexually with no one to intervene. Actions matched with words following the arrival of a woman who understands the struggles for women emancipation. To ensure that Nigerian women take their rightful place in the school. Top on the agenda is the Sex Offenders Register created to change the narratives of rape. The Girl Child Education also took center stage with a lot of partnerships between stakeholders to reverse negative indices. As a young woman, I decided to sell granite. The Ministry of Women Affairs shall be focused on the girl child education and mentoring in order to provide the quality of manpower and population of Nigeria. To have women at the center of development. Governors. To give hope to our women. 
traditional rulers to help in building peace and diverse ministries and relevant women groups. Women should work for women now. From Namibia, and we can borrow ideas from Kaduna to take somewhere else. The advocacy did not just end on round tables, but trickled down to the streets, where women deployed all strategies to drive home their messages and demands. <laughs> to name and shame anyone that does that. Much more for women with articulated programs in social investment, skills acquisition, and empowerment. I'm so happy. 2019 also witnessed ICT training for rural women and for persons living with disabilities. They train us how to operate with a system. In keeping with social contracts, the Ministry of Women Affairs reached out to internally displaced persons, Afrans, and other vulnerable groups with messages of hope. <laughs> to round up the year and set the tone for 2020, all former ministers of women affairs answered the call of the incumbent to chart a new course towards advancing women and girls' issues. We know where the children mobilizing women to interested in politics. This unique action gave women hope of a better deal in 2020 and beyond, as the triviality of party affiliation and other differences are buried to put their cause top of everything. Momso Damien Dati, NTA News. The federal government set the pace for health security in 2019 and plans to consolidate on primary health care revitalization in 2020. Health correspondent Rabi Abdallah brings out the concluding part of the report on how the health sector fared in 2019. In terms of disease outbreak, 127 Nigerians are said to have died from Lassa fever in 21 states between January and April in 2019 while the yellow fever outbreak recorded in the year, according to the World Health Organization, tripled as a total of 4,189 suspected yellow fever cases were recorded from January to December 2019. Nigeria's efforts to meet its human, animal, and environmental health challenges led to the development and launch of the One Health Strategic Plan that integrates human, animal and environmental health management for improved health security. The Nigerian government launched what has been referred to as the largest HIV and AIDS survey results for people living with HIV and AIDS, known as the National HIV and AIDS Indicator and Impact Survey, NAIS, result. By the launch of the survey, it became clear that the burden of the disease has reduced by almost half, bringing the prevalence to 1.9 million against the 2014 data. There is enough treatment slot, there is enough commodities to treat these individuals. It is to find them now that's our major drive. We should be on 91, 95% of people who know their status. We're still way behind. We're, we're just doing about 50%. And in terms of remission, that people who are on the drugs and are consistently using the drugs to the point that the virus is undetectable in their system, it is when it is suppressed as that, that we can prevent transmission. We're still not doing well around that area. And that's because the health system is weak. We need to strengthen our health system. Um, 2019 has not been a bad year. We've had relatively a peaceful relationship among the various uh, uh, workers in there. The various groups have cooperated well with each other. The agenda of the president is to expand primary health care. And uh, by now we have about 40% of them uh, revitalized and functioning. But we also want to improve the capability altogether by making them function around the clock so that they can deliver service, particularly maternity services, around the clock. The secondary health care level is a bit weak and uh, will require collaboration, particularly with state government and the private sector. While some positive steps were taken in the right direction, health watchers highlighted the major areas in the health sector with very weak performance, which they said must be addressed.
it's not only about allocation now, but they're talking about releases. So we hope in 2020 there will be more uh, releases of the health budget so that more activities also uh, can be done. The health sector took cognizance of the contributions of the Nigerian Television Authority and the fight against HIV and AIDS as it's backed awards at both corporate and individual category in Abuja. Rabi Abdullah, NTA News. You're watching the network news on the NTA. We have more reports after this break. If you like say the bread, don't take time to finish. Uh -huh. Push! Oh! Ah! When they're supposed to buy for they, they will not buy. We look here, we look here. It's still that same 200 naira for it. You will still buy. Okay, to 200. You can put your usual bit. Yes, but you go add 888. Join now. It's a beautiful. <laughs> Still not 200, you give that lady. Eh, na 888 is that. 888 na the new Awoof. Recharge with star 888 star pin hash to enjoy five times Awoof from MTN to call any network. You fit also enjoy a more top fit to you. Just ask your vendor for Awoof for you. Conductor, where my other energy? Office man. You know they forget money, self. Oh, forget it. You go even hard 888. Join that shit. Give my shit. Post football without banter. We love banter. All kinds of banter. Like the banter from a safe distance. We go beat in a later. There's the this is still my house banter. Dad, why do you so bad? It's not as bad as zero, zero. I know you're only calling to banter, banter. You got someone Ah, ah, bad belly banter. Your team can't even score an own goal. <sighs> Dry banter. I beg, take Joe. This is the only cup your team will be winning this season. <laughs> and then there's that. Better banter. Whatever the banter, banter better with Coca Cola, the official soft drink partner of the English Premier League. In Nigeria, there is one sound we need to silence. So let's silence the ache before it starts with Oral B All Round Protection. Its advanced technology helps prevent both tooth holes and gum problems that can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your teeth, giving them all round protection. Because the only sound we really want to hear is that of our future. For healthier, stronger teeth in one week. <laughs> Vital. Quality is vital foam. Hello, honey. Hey, baby. Wow. Those guys are good in bed. <laughs> what? Yes, we are good in bed. Hurry now to any vital foam accredited dealer nationwide or visit us online on www.vitafoamng.com to place your order today. Vitaphone, the fine art of living. And Kara shopping with the right place That one no fine. You know, nice no, it's too dull. Oh. This one. Oh, wow, this it's beautiful. beautiful. Omo, this fabric. It's going to fade, though. Yeah. Look, make I tell you something. The new area, Ankara, it go take good care of it. Ah. True. And the price, cheap, cheap. Try new area along Yankara and colors now. Are you not supposed to be? Get up, get up. Brass. Now my house is going to watch television. Go TV. Hey, hold on, hold on. The subject, your coconut. Watch your cooking. Oh, let me see them. What did they have? I just said something that happened for this company. Now, Ginger! Now, Jolly! Go TV just run one new package with the deco. Go TV, Ginger, and I've got more money. Me too, I get new package.
change. Then they call a God TV jolly. Everybody gets your to pick up. My people now double boss and they apple for this company. Move up to Go TV Jolly with 68 plus channels for 2,400 naira per month. Or move up to Go TV Ginger with 47 plus channels for only 1,600 naira per month. All of us be Go TV family. Make we enjoy them together. Discover the all new Nivea Nourishing Cocoa Lotion. Specially formulated with Nivea's Deep Moisture Serum and Africa's Natural Cocoa for 48 hour deep moisture. Glowing, radiant skin with nourishing cocoa lotion from Nivea. Hamilton is here, but we are ready. Get your special Nivea offer in stores today and break up with Hamatan for good. Thank you for remaining with the NTA. The Code of Conduct Tribunal says it may revisit its earlier order suspending the acting registrar general of the Corporate Affairs Commission, Obegeli Azuka Azinge. This follows an application to that effect filed by Azinge's counsel. Olabode Arewa reports. The defendant, Obegeli Azinge, was removed from a position based on another of the Code of Conduct Tribunal. She was arraigned on an 11th count charge of alleged non-declaration of assets. This was in contravention of the 1999 Constitution. Having pleaded not guilty to the charges, our matter was initially adjourned to the 29th of January. However, counsel to the prosecution had on 28th of December 2019 gone ahead to obtain an ex parte order for a suspension. At Monday's resumed hearing, our counsel, Abiodu Wunikoku SCN, called the tribunal's attention to a lack of fair hearing in granting the suspension order, saying the defense was just said with motion for a suspension in court. The tribunal, while adjourning the matter to the earlier adjourned date of 29th of January, said it may revisit as engaged suspension order if a defense team argued a good case. So we were surprised when we started reading in the media that there were some proceedings after that date. And some far-reaching orders were made, including orders suggesting that our client has been removed from office based on order of court and all the rest. So we didn't know what it was all about. We struggled to try and access the record, but you know it's been holiday season that was granted. The, the, the Registry of the Tribunal made serious efforts to serve the defendant and uh, the counsel, but unfortunately they couldn't be served until this morning. Obi Ageli Azinge is also facing charges of receiving certain allowances not due to her, in Abuja Labodarewa, NTA News. The recently introduced SuperCount concept has upscaled aggressive response to security threats in the Northeast geopolitical zone. Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tuku Boratai stated this while on an operational tour of Nigerian Army units and formations in parts of Adamawa and Bono states. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa reports. This is to assure you that we are ready to give you all the support for you to continue to operate until these criminals finally are pushed out. We will not give them any breathing space. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Baratai, in Madagali, Adamawa State, charging troops to maintain an eagle eye on threats by ensuring proactive rather than reactive response. In Pulka, Borno State, he commended officers and soldiers for securing the once vulnerable town and promised improved logistics, welfare in the front lines and barracks across the country. At the famous Goza Hills, a critical police training site overrun by Boko Haram in 2014, recaptured by the armed forces in 2015, massive reconstruction is on and the mobile police are expected to resume training soon. The army chief climbed the hill to have a feel of what troops deployed to secure the area go through. All areas where the uh, terrorists are hibernating, uh, they've identified them and they constantly raid those areas. So that's the spirit and I'm sure the progress is quite uh, commendable. Lieutenant General Buratai stressed that Operation Lafia Dole, operating through three sectors, dissected into 23 super camps, has made significant impact 
in the northeast. This super camp concept is born out of experience. It's not just out of the blues. I think the initial misconception, I think, uh, has been uh, assuaged. Or well, the fears of the people have been assuaged. And assuaged is uh, something that we will continue to build upon. 2019 operational year has come and gone. There were challenges and successes were recorded. This operational tour provides an opportunity for the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukubratai, to appraise platforms and make projections that will enhance counter-insurgency operations in the Northeast. From Bu in Borno State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. For the Nigerian Armed Forces to rid the country of all forms of security threats, all hands must be on deck, especially in intelligence gathering and sharing. Uh, Vice Marshal Olushegun Risalvato Philip, the new Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command Makudi, stated these as he assumed office in Makudi. Hussein Mohammed Isa reports. This signaled the formal assumption of office by the new Air Officer Commanding Tactical Air Command Makudi, Air Vice Marshal Olushegun Risalvato Philip. He took over from the outgoing AOC Air Vice Marshal Charles O, who has been posted to Bochi as Air Officer Commanding Special Operations Command. Air Vice Marshal O, who led the command for less than seven months, described his stay as fulfilling. The new AOC promised to do more. Let's continue from where uh, my sellers uh, finished and see what we can contribute to make the Air Force uh, something, it, uh, the kind of Air Force Nigeria at large want to see us do, especially in this period of the various crises and insurgencies we have all over the country. Born on the 5th of March 1965, the new AOC who hails from Lagos State was enlisted into the Nigerian Air Force in 1984 as a member of the sixth regular course of the Nigerian Defense Academy Kaduna. Air Vice Marshal Philip is a seasoned combat helicopter pilot with over three decades working experience in the Nigerian Air Force. The senior officer has acquired over 2,000 flying hours to his credit and has the honor of flying the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces for eight years. He was appointed Deputy Director and Substantive Director at various levels of the Air Force before his movement from the Directorate of Evaluation NAF Headquarters to the Tactical Command Mokudi. Hussein Mohamed Isa, NTN News. The Oshun State Command of the Nigeria Police Force have successfully exhumed the body of a fourth-year student of Lagos State University, Shun Oladele, who was allegedly murdered in Ikoile, Oshun State, by her boyfriend for money rituals. Correspondent Tokbe Alavi reports that the Commissioner of Police, Johnson Kokumo, led the operation. Late Shun Oladele, 23 years, was a theater arts student of Lagos State University before she met her untimely death and her body severed on December 8, 2019 by her boyfriend and his cohorts who are now in police custody. The police were in Ikoyile, Oshun State to exhume Shem's body from where the suspects had buried her. It was just carried out between both of us because my parents was not even sleeping here. They were at the hotel. So it was both of us that we just sit. That how can he help my parents? Then he raised the suggestion, and I was low into it. Uh, we now use a um, pencil, pencil piece to knock her head. So I now cut the head and bread, and heart, and the two hand. She was supposed to return to school a day after she left home. The mother tried to persuade her to wait, but immediately she received the call, she just said she's going. The Commissioner of Police, Oshun State Command, Johnson Kokuma, advised parents to monitor the activities of their wards. Killing of a woman being is unlawful. It remains unlawful and it cannot be tolerated in any society. That is why we are here to see that we do the needful by way of investigation with a view to prosecuting the suspects. In the meantime, the remains of the victim have been taken to Lagos by police homicide experts for autopsy. From Ikoyile, Oshun State, Tokwe Alabi, NTA News. 
Kaduna State Government has directed that all gas refill outlets located in residential areas be shut down immediately. This is to avoid any reoccurrence of Saturday's gas explosion, which claimed lives and property at Sabon Tesha Kaduna. Muhammad Omar Ajingi reports. Property destroyed, life cut short. <laughs> Abile Akubu left in pain, struggling to survive. He is one of the victims of the gas explosion that claimed lives, including the chief executive officer of the Atomic Energy Commission. The state governor is here to assess the level of damage and sympathize with the victims. Unhappy with the act of negligence that led to the death of innocent people, the governor did not wait to go back to his office before giving this directive. In a residential area like this, it is not acceptable to have this kind of facilities. We've already given directives that all such uh, outlets should be shut down. We will relocate them, we will give them land in the industrial areas where adequate precautions uh, to prevent things like this happening uh, will be put in place. The governor was also at the residence of the late professor to condole his survivors in Kaduna. I'm Muhammad Umarajingi, NCA News. President Muhammad Buhari has expressed determination to address infrastructure deficit in the southeast region of the country. Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development, Uche Oga, represented President Buhari at the inauguration and handing over of erosion and road rehabilitation works at Uzuakoli in Bende local government area of Abia State. Steve Lonai Mwakolo has details. Minister of State for Mines and Steel Development, Uche Oga, who represented President Muhammad Buhari, told the people that the completion of the project is an indication that the president has their interests at heart and indeed the entire Southeast, promising that more projects are on the way, particularly part two of the project, which is the asphalting of the improved road. The president has shown us is possible. Everywhere you go, you see the projects are being completed. He doesn't believe that every project should be left uncompleted. There is a joy that I bear to witness the huge result. Uh, this community has organized. in Ben, the local government area, is one of the erosion prone zones of Abia State. The people had for years cried out to the federal government for help every rainy season. But help came their way through their daughter, Georgina Ehuria, pressed by the concerns shown by the federal government. The traditional ruler of Uzuakole, Asian Kingdom, conferred chieftaincy titles on the Minister of Interior, Lauf Aregbeshola, and the Comptroller General of Immigration, Mohamed Babandede. A civic reception was held to honor prominent sons and daughters of Uzuakole. In Uzuakole, Abia State, Steve Lenai, Malcolm, NTA News. Chairman Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abiket Dabiria Erewa, says the federal government is making progress in creating an enabling environment for diasporans to invest in Nigeria with minimal cost. She stated this during an on the spot assessment of some facilities in Imo State built by diasporans. Bright Ebocho reports. The on-the-spot assessment visit took the chairman Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri Rewa, to an engineering construction factory, as well as a stroke and neuroscience hospital established by Nigerians in Diaspora of Imo State origin. Mrs. Erewa, who was visibly elated at the contributions of Nigerians living abroad towards the development of their communities, says the initiative will go a long way in complementing the effort of the federal government towards ensuring a better life for Nigerians. You know, what we are seeing here, we are seeing people doing things selflessly. So that we have a diaspora commission is number one encouragement from government. And then reaching out to them, you know, encouraging them. If others see what people have done here in the most state, you find a lot more poor people. So a lot of Nigerians in diaspora say, we want to do this, we want to do that, but we, we don't have a structure. The commission is providing that structure. Some of the initiators of the project are sure that they will not relent in their efforts at supporting government at all levels, but call for provision of a more conducive environment for investment. We focus on treatment of neurological cases and also neurosurgical cases. 
top on the list will be stroke, epilepsy, Parkinson's, memory disorders, headaches, disorders of different kinds. The contributions of more people living in the diaspora will no doubt continue to positively impact the Nigerians' economy. Bright, Ebuchu, NTA News. Time to join Michael in Lagos for more reports on NTA Network News. Hello, Michael. Hello, Muhammad, and welcome to Lagos. We start with effort by the Lagos State Government to ease mobility. Transversing the news and crannies of Lagos State will soon be as easy as possible with the rapid pace at which the Osho de Transport Interchange is tracking mobility. The Lagos State Government says the interchange transported more than 1.6 million passengers within 25 to 150 days, Abola de Salami reports. The density of Lagos State puts at about 22 million has posed a serious challenge on mobility. It is estimated that an average Lagosian spent about three to six hours on roads for a journey that could easily be concluded within one to two hours. Although the state government is responding to these challenges by activating water transportation, but what becomes of residents living in areas far from the waterways? Travel should not be a, a, a thing of stress. That travel should be exciting and it should be uh, something everybody would like to go through and not the kind of uh, uh, stress that people go through nowadays. The local state government is reacting to this dynamic situation which informed the construction of the Oshodi transport interchange. The success story this time is that within its first 250 days of operations, the interchange has committed 1.6 million passengers, a figure that could triple once other terminals within the interchange become operational. It's also a good testament to the new administration that of continuity, that things are run unbroken. When they came in, we were doing uh, about 84,000 passengers a day. Now we are 300,000 passengers. When they came in, we were doing 50 buses. Today now we are doing about 180 buses every day. The interchange will not only serve domestic purposes, but cater for commuters traveling to other states and development which the Lagos State Government says will bring on board innovation and transport management. Key players in the transportation sector are optimistic that once these channels and other intermodal systems are activated, transversing the nooks and crannies of Lagos State will be easily done. In Lagos, Abolade Salami, NTA News. Though commendable successes have been recorded by the Lagos State Government in various sectors of the economy, Lagosians believe there is still room for perfection. Residents of the metropolis disclose these while interacting with Annie Daniels on their expectations from the State Government in year 2020. Lagos State, with a population of about 20 million people, is regarded by many as a home to all. The state records a high number of migrants daily. The strength, respondents say, takes a toll on available infrastructure in the mega city. They were also quick to applaud initiative of past and present administrations to accommodate the fast growing population of Lagos. But say more needs to be done. Overhauling of some of the roads. So some roads should be redone and redone well with a mindset for it to last. If the government can intervene in the housing sector by building houses for, for civil servants and non-civil servants so that it will be more affordable for the people to live in. They should make our electricity stable. Environmental sustainability, that's cleanness of the environment, with healthier lives, with quality education, we can start somewhere. With these and more, respondents are optimistic that insecurity and other social vices will be curbed. Wherever I see 10 persons, I see a first man. That shows that there is security. So I appreciate the, the security in figure, but I'm not 100% in the art. Lagosians, however, applauded the state government's desire to better the lives of the citizenry. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. More reports after this commercial break. Please stay tuned.
They are germs. You will fall sick. Daughter, why don't you stop them? Mom, stopping the kids from playing stops the learning. That's why we stop the germs. Indeed, Safeguard fights against germs. Safeguard removes 99% of germs. Why don't you stop them? We have to stop. Not the kids, but... We have come to the end of another successful year and we wish to appreciate all those that mean so much to us. Our sponsors, our clients, government at all levels, corporate bodies, advertisers, religious bodies, civil society groups, political parties, and above all, you, our esteemed viewer. Together, we made 2019 great. Together, we shall make 2020 even greater. That is why we say thank you. This is wishing you Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year. Back to our Abuja studios. While global stocks bleed following tensions between the United States and Iran, the stock market in Nigeria is sustaining gains. Mpulang Dakog is here with details and more on business news. Hello Mpulang. Hello Mohamed. Thank you for joining us on Business News. Financial reforms in the public sector have saved the nation about 1 trillion naira. This was revealed by the immediate past permanent secretary to the Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mohamed Kiari Dikwa. Kiari said this also created more transparency and accountability in line with the desires of the present administration, although the whistleblower policy is facing some constraints. We have recovered over 300 billion. But the problem, we challenge we face is how to settle those who give us the tips. Because we are finding it very difficult to identify them or let the public to know, or even convince the government to say that these are tips received. And for us to compensate them is a problem. So these are challenges. I believe once uh, the whistleblowing protection bill is put in place, the challenges will be addressed. The presidential initiative on continuous audit has also brought leakages and then the stuff, the wastages associated with the budget implementation. Electricity distribution companies and Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission had announced a review of the multi-year tariff order 2015 and the minimum remittance order. This Monday, the Executive Director Research and Advocacy Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, Sunday Odutan, issued a statement to clarify the tariff review. The statement says the regulator does not envisage an immediate increase in end user tariffs until April 1, after which tariff shortfalls will be gradually passed on to the consumer until this is fully completed by the end of 2021. The statement says the increase will be slight. And it's a green day on the Nigerian Stock Exchange as trading closed positive this Monday, maintaining an uptrend. The NSE All Share Index appreciated by 1.38%, while market capitalization rose to 13.1 trillion naira. Investors traded 526 million shares in 5,784 deals valued at 5.3 billion naira. Dangote Cement, Flour Mill, and Nascon led the gainers, while the losers were topped by Seplas, MTN Nigeria, and Unilever. Zenit Bank, Universal Insurance, and UBA were the toast of investors as they recorded the highest volume of traded shares. That concludes business news. Felicia is in just with the next set of reports. Hello, Felicia. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, Moplang, and welcome to Joss. Plateau State Police Command is scaling up operations in surveillance and intelligence gathering in tackling myriad of security challenges in the state. Commissioner of Police Isaac Akimoyede gave the indication while addressing newly promoted senior officers of the command. Abdul Wahab Babankanti reports. The Plateau State Command of the Nigerian Police Force has successfully investigated a total of 3,027 crimes in the state in 2019. Out of this number, 
2,881 crimes were prosecuted in the year under review with 2,114 convictions. To strengthen these feats, the command is urging its personnel to employ modern policing strategies to curb crime. Whatever strategy that we put in place to ensure that this is made possible, that is to ensure that there is no kidnapping area, put it in place. And if there is need for assistance from airports, we will always provide assistance for you. For efficient policing of the state, some policemen were promoted towards encouraging the personnel to give in their best in securing the nation against internal security threat. So we are going to ensure that we strengthen our intelligence base to ensure that this year we perform better. The CP asked the public to give credible information that will assist the police in crime prevention in jaws up Duluhaba Bankanti and TN News of fire incidents across the country in the past week has prompted the Plato State Fire Service to caution residents on precautionary measures to take in their homes and public places, especially during the Hamilton season. Zen Redding Moon reports. Fire has often been described as the greatest servant, yet the worst master once it conflagrates, difficult to control and destroying everything in its path. The dry and windy weather is a major factor to the several cases of fire incidents that have occurred across the country in the past week. We keep the gas where it is very safe. An issue of maybe the issue of keeping matches, lighters and whatsoever. You need to keep all these things very safe. I think that's the safest way to handle gas. Keep it as far away as possible from the kitchen, from the cooking fire and then switch it off when not in use. In terms of um, the uh, electronics, that uh, electrical uh, fire outbreak, you cannot do anything about that because sometimes it's the neighbor that brings high current. Although the fire service has most times been blamed as regards poor responsiveness on an event of fire incident, the Plateau State Fire Service underscores preventive rather than curative approach to the issue. We have uh, the fire prevention you know, unit, which is very, very you know, important. Now that has to do with you know, enlightenment. Uh, they go out there and then you know, talk to various organizations you know, on the need uh, to handle uh, fire-related uh, you know, issues with caution. It is, however, quite clear that the regular outbreaks of fire disasters can only be abated when both government and citizens change their attitude. In Joss, Zen Red Moon, NT News. That's it from Joss. Mohammed is back to you in Abuja for more. Asia. Extreme cold, which has been a major feature of the Hamatan this year, is giving rise to advocacy for preventive measures, especially against associated health challenges. In taking these measures, residents of the country, or particularly Nigerians, are to expect momentary respite following the end of the first circle of extreme temperature fall, going by predictions from the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET. Onengi Finefairs has this report. Temperatures in some states of Nigeria dropped to as low as 8 degrees Celsius, leaving residents to deal with the dire consequence of extreme cold and associated conditions. Residents in several parts of the country are forced to devise different means to manage the cold, especially by keeping warm at all times. You wake up in the morning and you can't even breathe well. Your nostrils are blocked. The weather is so uh, unusual and threatening. While many lament the effects of Amatan on their health, it's an entirely different game for sellers of blankets and sweaters, a typical illustration of one man's poison being another man's meat. I like the cold weather now. Why you like it? Because money they come now. <laughs> At the same market way. Most people come now, they ask for cardigans, they ask for stockings, overalls, all those things they used to cover their babies and even for adults. I'm traveling to Kano where it's very, very cold, so I need it to protect myself. Beyond keeping warm, medical experts recommend good nutrition, intake of fluids, especially water, and prevention of avoidable exposure to the cold and dust of Hamatan. Care, too, must be taken to avoid skin dryness, itchy eyes, flu, pneumonia, asthma, and other pulmonary diseases. For people that have pre-existing conditions like asthma, 
COPD. This is the time when you are leaving the house. There's not the time to forget your inhalers at home. You must remember to put it in your bag. Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, insists on caution in dealing with the weather, which is currently witnessing warmth following increase in temperatures in some parts of the country. Uh, temperatures are beginning to uh, now pick up. We have seen from today's observation across most parts of the country in the north, temperatures are coming up, uh, some recording getting to 30 degrees Celsius as of today. Visibility, too, is expected to improve in the next 48 hours, while NIMET continues to monitor the winds. In Abuja, Onengiye, Fine Face, NTA News. The news continues after this time out. Don't go away. President Muhammad Buhari's projection for the new year on NTA Tuesday Live this week. Experts will take a look at the sectoral expectations. The program, Tuesday Live at 10.30 p.m., will be incisive and informative. Don't miss it. They swore an oath to serve our fatherland and defend the people. They traded their freedom, comfortable homes, and mortgaged their lives on the battleground for our unity and peaceful living. These are the great, fearless, loyal, and committed Nigerian armed forces who risked their lives courageously to safeguard our borders. But in the line of duty, many never returned. Nigerians, arise, let's celebrate our fallen heroes. Put on the remembrance emblem with pride to support the incapacitated and families of our fallen heroes. It is indeed befitting to honor the memory of the gallant hearts of them all who paid this supreme sacrifice to keep them. President Muhammad Buhari joins all ministries, parastatals, religious and corporate bodies to donate generously to the Emblem Appeal Lunch. Send your donations to these accounts. Account name, Emblem Appeal Lunch. Account number, 393-200-7526. Ecobank Nigeria, PLC. The Northern Governors Forum has expressed shock over the death of the chairman, Nigeria Atomic Energy Commission, Professor Simon Malam, his son and others at Sabon Tisha area of Kaduna on Saturday following a gas explosion. In a condolence message, chairman of the forum and Plateau State Governor Simon Bagolalan describes the incident as unfortunate, painful and a huge loss to the entire people of Northern region. The immediate family and Nigeria at large. Governor Lalong prays God to grant the soul of Professor Malam eternal rest as well as give the family the strength to be comforted. To sports now, Nigeria female beach volleyball team qualifies to the next stage of the 2020 Olympic Games in Accra, Ghana. Olimide Eguntola has these and more on Sports Update. female beach volleyball team has won a ticket to the next stage of the 2020 Olympic Games qualifiers held in Accra, Ghana. Team Nigeria beat Team Bennett 2-0 in the first match and went ahead to beat Ghana 2-0 in the second match to qualify. We are ranked third in Africa and I don't see no reason why we should come here and get anything below the first position that we have gotten today. We didn't lose a single set. Team Nigeria male team is expected to depart Nigeria on the 7th of January for Lume, Togo to participate in the similar championship. Meanwhile, Nigeria female volleyball team on Monday evening lost its first match of the ongoing 2020 Olympic qualifiers in Yaoundé, Cameroon, to the host 0-3 at 12-25, 10-25, and 8-25. Nigeria's next opponent is Egypt on Tuesday and Botswana on Wednesday. I think they're going to go around the table. No. Sports-loving Nigerians have lauded the achievements of Aruna Kodri in table tennis. Describing his latest ITTF ranking as a good omen to Nigerian sports. It's a very, very great feat and achievement for the whole continent of Africa. I think it's going to be a very a good achievement for us. Maybe can even, even be number one in the world. Being there as number one, we boost the morale of others that are coming behind. Aruna Kodri moved from 20th position to 18th world best player following the release of January 2020 ranking by the International Table Tennis Federation, ITTF. In the rating... Kodri move up two steps to remain undisputed African best-ranked player, his best ranking so far in his career. 
In the Nigerian Professional Football League, Plateau United maintained its first position on the log with 24 points after a 4 0 demolition of two time African champions, the Aimba of Aba. Lobby Stars is second with 21 points with a 2 0 victory at the expense of Sunshine Stars. MFM dropped to eighth position after losing 2 0 away to Rivers United, now third on the log with 21 points. With sports update, Ulum D. Controller, NT News. Here are Tuesdays where the prospects for Nigeria and other cities around the world. concludes network news for tonight thank you for watching good night